Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything from hair to fashion to skincare products. We'll talk about the latest trends in makeup, hairstyles, and anti-aging remedies. And we'll cover all of the newest fashion trends. If you have an interest in or questions about the beauty and fashion trends that might work best for you, the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast has got you covered. Tips Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello, everybody. How is it going today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. I hope you've had a wonderful week. Um, I hope the sun has been shining. You've been feeling positive and good. I have been so crazy busy lately. I'm working on so many new projects. Um, so I'm feeling good. I love when I have a bunch of projects on the go. Um, it's a little bit overwhelming sometimes, but it also just makes me so excited because I'm about to achieve so many exciting things. So I'm feeling extra good today, so I hope you're feeling extra good. Um, I am back with some more beauty tips for you. Um, Today's episode is going to be all about hair, and I'm going to be talking about hair hacks. And I think some of the most important things that we can do for our hair to make sure that it's staying healthy. Um, healthy hair is uh, definitely never going to go out of style. We all crave those luscious locks. I know me, I love, you know, I always want to make sure I'm taking care of my hair because I just want my hair to grow. And I'm one of those people that's like, oh, my hair never grows. No, no, no. That's hence why I got hair extensions because I just feel like it never grows. So I've really been starting to implement some of these hacks that I'm going to be talking about with you today. Um, Some of these hacks have been working for me. Um, I know they've worked for lots of my friends. I've read so many reviews online. So I'm going to be sharing with you my best hair hacks to keep your hair nice and healthy or to get it nice and healthy. A lot of these too will help enhance the growth of your hair, which I feel like so many of us just want our hair so long. Like it's just so common to be like, my hair's not growing. I just want to long how does it grow fast like and there's so many things that we can actually do just like adding into our daily routine that can help make sure our hair stays healthy or gets healthier um, and it can start to grow a little bit faster so I'm gonna be sharing lots of great hacks with you today I'm also gonna be sharing one of the holy grail I think beauty products in general. I'm going to be talking about how it benefits your hair, hair, how maybe it doesn't benefit your hair, how to use this Holy Grail product. I'm not going to give it quite, I'm not going to give it away quite yet. So you have to stay tuned for later in the episode to figure out what I believe is a Holy Grail product of the beauty industry and especially for your hair. I wonder if you have any guesses. Start to, start to get that wheel in your brain turning right now. So I'm going to stop rambling on. I'm going to jump right in to sharing these hair hacks with you. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, I feel like we need to understand, you know, our hair structure before I jump into exactly how to take care of your hair. A lot of people just jump in trying to, you know, just throw all these expensive products on their hair thinking that it's just going to magically work. All your split ends are going to magically disappear and everything's going to be just fine. Um, But it's not just high quality products that you need. You need to make sure that you understand, you know, why you're using what you're using because what like a high quality product that works for your best friend might not work for you you might need protein in your hair but your best friend might not need protein in her hair and sometimes when you have too much protein in your hair that's actually when you can cause breakage which it sounds weird because you're like oh I want my hair to be nice and strong so if I have too much protein how does it cause breakage well it's all because of the structure of our hair and so understanding the structure of your hair is definitely going to help you implement I think the right hacks the right habits into your life so that you all are ensuring that your hair is staying healthy but you're doing it the right way because we all have different hair types so whether your hair is curly pin straight whether it is long or short or frizzy or coarse or fine or like for me I have fine hair but I have a lot of it 
Um, it's just not long, or at least it's not long enough for me. So that's why I've always had, or I shouldn't say always, I've had hair extensions for the past year, and I've had hair extensions off and on pretty much uh, as soon as I started getting my hair done. <laughs> so because I love my long hair, I love the look of it. So these hacks, I'm actually going to start implementing a lot more of these into my routine as well. So we can definitely engage and keep in touch and see, you know, what is working for you because it's, it's all different for everybody. So what is the structure of our hair? So there's the mudella. Um, so this is the soft central part of our hair shaft, okay? So thick hair contains large amounts of medulla, and fine hair has almost none, okay? So medulla, M-E-D-U-L-L-A. Now there's the cortex, and this is the thickest layer of your hair. It contains lots of kind of fiber proteins and it's the pigment that gives your hair its color so it's called the cortex and then there's the cuticle so the cuticle is the tough protective outer layer of your hair okay so those are kind of like the three layers of your hair so you got the medulla the cortex and the cuticle so it's important to understand those maybe if you want to look into a little bit more of your certain type of hair I could go on I can make a whole episode which I can if you guys would like me to make a whole episode on different types of hair and how to care for those different types of hair because not everything is going to work for the same person we all kind of have slightly different types of hair usually um, I find like really really curly hair can be a little bit more coarse you're going to need different products than somebody that has pin straight long hair right so lots of different ver- varieties varieties of um, hair types so I'm hoping that a lot of these hacks are pretty universal and I believe that they are I think a lot of these ones I'm going to be talking about is a just universal kind of hacks that we can all do Um, but there of course will be some that work better for others and yeah so with that being said you you know, we are always washing, we're always styling, we're coloring our hair, most of us, um, and that's when we can damage the cuticle. So it's rendering, so which makes it unable to protect the central parts of the hair shaft. So we are constantly washing, styling, and most of us are coloring our hair quite often, and all of these things can cause damage to the cuticle, um, and then you know, it renders and it's unable to protect the central parts of our hair shaft when we cause damage to our cuticle. So then this causes you to lose some of those fiber proteins that make up your hair cortex, making your hair too thin, fragile, and then prone to breakage. So that's kind of how those three sections work. Um, now let's jump in to some of these hair ta- hair hacks to protect those three layers of our hair. So the first one is shampooing. I think shampooing can dish your hair the right way is the most basic crucial step that anyone can do to ensure that they're keeping their hair nice and healthy. So when you are shampooing you want to keep the temperature not too warm at all but not too cold either kind of like a lukewarm temperature which I know none of us really like to shower in a lukewarm temperature at least I I definitely don't. I like my showers burning hot. And but that is actually so terrible for your hair. Think of it like you would never wash your delicates in really really hot water, right? So your hair is kind of like the same. You want to make sure that you kind of have like a lukewarm, just nothing too hot because when it's too warm, it's going to be damaging the cuticle. It opens up it opens it right up. And then if you do have color in your hair as well, um, making sure that you're washing and conditioning your hair with cooler water um, will ensure that your color lasts longer. So basically, when you have water that's a little bit on the warmer side, it, it does open up the inner cuticles of your hair. So it makes it easier to get the dirt and any product residue that might be trapped inside of your hair. So yeah, totally, you can rinse your hair, rinse it out with like warmer water, but when you actually get down to shampooing it, I would turn the water down a little bit. You just don't want it like super, super hot. So you also just want to make sure that you're scrubbing your scalp. Um, you don't want to massage in circular motions because that can tangle your hair, but use vertical motions instead kind of like you're scratching your head but like a massage so this is going to stimulate the scalp and get some of the good blood flow um, which is going to help your hair grow faster you want to stimulate your scalp and get that moving around so 
Also, you have probably heard this before, but you should never wash your hair every single day. It's going to dry out your scalp. It's going to dry out your hair. Um, and it's going to encourage your scalp actually to produce more oil. So the more you wash your hair, your head is going to be producing more oil, which sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? But it's true. And I know it's hard for a little bit, especially if you're used to always washing your hair almost every single day. Um, y- it's going to feel kind of greasy, kind of gross when you start to only watch it like, you know, every two days or every three days. Um, but you just kind of have to let yourself work up to it. Your hair will eventually get used to this. Um, I am still just like a sucker. I wash my hair probably every second day, um, sometimes every third day um, when I'm pushing it. I have gone a little bit longer, but for me, I, I just love my, I love freshly washed hair, um, which I think a lot of us do, right? But we want to try to break that habit. So if you are wanting to break your habit from washing your hair every single day, start by washing it every single second, every every second day, and then you can move up and move up once your scalp um, isn't producing as much oil. You won't find that it bothers you as much. You're, you will get natural to it. So like those people that just like Literally, you could never wash your hair. Like, technically, if you left it and you dealt with the oil for probably weeks on end, eventually your hair would not get super oily anymore. It's a weird concept. I know we need to be washing our hair and our scalp. It's a clean thing to do. But eventually it does get to that point. So just let yourself break the habit. You know, put your hair in a bun on those days that you feel a little bit greasy. This is really going to help protect your hair and make sure that it will still be growing. So it's time for a little bit of a break, but don't go anywhere because when I get back, I'm going to be sharing so many more hacks with you. I've literally only shared one and I have a bunch, plus I will be sharing some tips and advice about the Holy Grail beauty product from my perspective. So stay tuned. I will be right back. Okay, so if you've been tossing and turning in your bed at all, cannot sleep, I have the solution for you. And the answer is Linens and Hutch products. Ever since I've received all my products from Linens and Hutch, I've been having the most amazing sleep. Um, I love this company, Linens and Hutch. They are a family-owned company, so you really see that personal level of customer care. They specialize in everything signature soft, double brush fabric. It's high-end, luxury, silky, bamboo type of materials, but at an affordable price because they are able to cut the middleman. And all of their colors, I love it. All of them are on trend. The patterns and choices are for every style of every type of room. I'm literally looking at my bed right now just in awe because the colors are so beautiful. So since you are a GSMC Beauty Tips listener, you need to head on over to linensandhutch.com slash beauty, enter in the promo code GSMC Beauty, and you'll be receiving 70% off site-wide and free shipping. Go check it out. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Joe. In case you forgot, or in case you're just tuning in right now today on the Beauty Tips Podcast, we're talking all about hair hacks. How to ensure our hair is going to stay strong and healthy, how we can, you know, help our hair grow faster, all that good stuff. So, that being said, I was just talking about shampooing. So now what comes with shampooing? Of course, conditioning. Um, so don't condition your scalp. I know a lot of people maybe think oh, I should condition my whole hair and oh it'll moisturize my scalp. No. Most of most conditioners are made for the hair and if you apply it to your scalp, it's going to make your scalp greasy. You're going to have to wash your hair more frequently with what we just talked about. We don't want to be washing our hair too frequently. So 
Always rinse your hair in cold water, like I mentioned as well, especially after you condition, because this is going to close the cuticle and it's going to make it extra strong. So even if you can stand like washing, like shampooing your hair in that lukewarm water, but once you're rinsing your conditioner, try to do it with cold water. It doesn't have to be freezing cold, but just cooler because it's going to close up that cuticle. It's going to just hold in all of that moisture, all of that product, um, and it's just going to ensure that your hair stays healthy and strong for a lot longer. Um, It just helps strengthen your hair. It makes it healthier when you wash it and rinse it in cold water. I know it's not as fun, but seriously, it does make a huge difference. Um, My next hair hack for you is using dry shampoo because I know we cannot wash our hair every single day, but trust me, I get it more than anyone. I hate having dirty hair. I hate looking slightly greasy. It just drives me nuts. I just don't like the feeling of it. So dry shampoo has been one of my best friends (laughs) for a very long time. Um... Dry shampoo will absorb the excess oil, um, but it's also great for styling your hair. So volume and texture. Like if your hair doesn't hold a bobby pin well, put some like dry shampoo in it and it's going to, that bobby pin's going to stay right in there. So it just doesn't make it slippery, right? So using dry shampoo can definitely prolong your hair washing. It really is helpful. I love to use my dry shampoo on the second day, the third day. Um, I find that especially if I use my dry shampoo and then I put it in a ponytail, I don't even notice that I didn't wash my hair that day. It feels totally normal. It looks totally normal and you get lots of volume. Even when I do wash my hair, um, say that day, I still will put dry shampoo in it for that texture and volume as well. So this is an awesome hair hack for styling, but also just keeping your hair healthy because then you're not washing your hair as frequently because that is not great for it. Now, the next tip I'm going to give for you is using a deep conditioning mask. There is a million out there. There's so many different types of deep conditioning masks. Go to your hairdresser, find out what exactly your hair type needs, um, what kind of state your hair is in is really going to depend, and what kind of hair you have is really going to depend on what kind of conditioning mask you're going to need. So I wish I could just like give you a giant list of the best like deep co- conditioning masks, but really, it is different for everybody but if you use high quality products one of your favorite lines will have a deep conditioning mask that works for you now I like to deep condition my hair probably twice a week um, or I try to do it at least twice a week Um, and one of the nights at least I'll usually sleep in my deep conditioning mask so I usually will want to this is usually when I probably day two day three of my hair I'll hop in the shower, um, rinse my hair, um, kind of just, you know, rinse my hair in water, and then I'm going to towel dry it with, I usually use a microfiber towel because it's just better for your hair than a regular one. So I will kind of, um, kind of like dab your hair dry. You don't want to be like really shaking your hair. And I know like we all put our hair up in those like little cute towel towel things on the top of our head (laughs) but it's best to use like a microfiber tower it's way better for your hair it's way less rough on it so I will kind of just dab my hair dry kind of get off any of the excess water and then I will put in a deep conditioning mask and I'll usually either braid my hair put in a low bun or leave it in my microfiber tower towel and I will let it sit all night. I will go to bed with it in my on my head, on my hair. So usually a low bun really works for me for this one or I sleep in the towel but I always get uncomfortable. So usually a low bun I will do this and then Um, If you don't want to get your pillow all gross or anything like that, lay down like a towel um, or like a nice satin blanket if you have one or some kind of fuzzy blanket on your your pillow so that you're not getting your pillow all gross. Um, But yeah, and then I wake up in the morning and then that's when I will, you know, hop in the shower, rinse out the mask, and then I'll shampoo and condition. Um, I love doing that. It gives my hair so much strength. It makes it feel so soft. So I definitely will try to sleep in a mask at least once a week. I don't always do it. I should do it more. Um, but this is a great tip to ensure that your hair is staying healthy. Now, with all that being said, talking about good quality products, you want to make sure your products are silicone, paraben, and sulfate free. All three of these things are not good for your hair. Avoid them at all costs. Unfortunately, the cheap hair products that are usually at drugstores and stuff do contain silicone, paraben, or sulfates. Um, If you are somebody that wants to try to save some money on some hair products, which I totally understand, there are 
some products that are that will be at the drugstore that are like paraben or sulfate free they might not be silicone free that one's a little bit different um but really try to make sure that it's sulfate free and paraben i feel like that those are the two most important silicone as well so if you don't have those three in it it's just going to make your hair way healthier so if you want healthy hair, we do have to invest in it, right? We have to invest in that. So we have to usually spend some more money on good quality products sometimes. So go into your into your hair salon, buy some good quality products because if you really want your hair healthy and strong, you're going to need to use those kind of products. Now, my next one is using heat protectant. I feel like this is so, so... um under underestimated I guess like people we talk about using heat products heat protectant but not everybody adds it into their routine and it's so so important if you are somebody like me I use heat on my hair almost every single day because my hair is unruly I have crazy curls all the time um they're and they're not fun crazy curls like they're just like poofy and frizzy and they're just not my cup of tea at all. I do not like the look of it. So I, I do use heat on my hair quite regularly. I always try to not blow dry my hair if possible. That is a great hack. If you can let your hair air dry, um, love that. If you can like wash it at night, put it in some braids and then wake up and have this like cute little braid wave going on in your, on your head. It's stunning. That's such a good look. And then you're saving yourself from, you know, that heat damage from the blow dryer. But we all use flat irons and curling irons. I totally get it. So when you are using those big Make sure you use a heat protectant. There's so many different types of heat protectant. Once again, maybe you want to talk to your hairstylist, find out what works best for you. Um, I actually use two different types of heat protectant usually on my head. Um, if I am blow drying my hair, I always put something in my hair after I shower that has a heat protectant in it, whether that's a mousse, whether that's like a keratin um, leave-in conditioner or something along those lines. I usually try to have like a... Um, like a liquid I guess I put in my hair or like a, a cream that I put in my hair that does, you know, double as a hair styling aid as well as a heat protectant. Um, and then too, if I am straightening my hair, flat ironing my hair, I will add in another heat protectant over top as well. Um, I hate the feeling of heat protectants, but seriously, it does really make a difference. Um, I find that heat protectant is not something that you can cheap out on as well either um, because I feel like the cheaper ones, they make your hair a little bit sticky, a little feel gross, maybe get greaser, greasy faster, which is just not fun. So also, you know, I would go for a high quality heat protectant as well. Now, you don't have to double up on heat protectant like I do. I just do that because usually my styling aids are um, just also have heat protectant in them. So it's always just been beneficial for me that way. But you don't need to double up on it like I do all the time. So find out what works for you. If you're somebody that never blow dries your hair, I would not worry about a cream heat protectant that goes in wet. I would just worry about like a spray one that goes in dry. So when you run your flat iron through it or your curling iron, you're protecting your hair. Um, now I mentioned um, sleeping and putting a, a towel down on your pillowcase if you are going to, you know, do an overnight mask. Um, I'm sure you've heard of this before, but satin pillowcases are the best for your hair. Um, these, it just makes it less frizzy, less breakage. It's just less harsh. Um, so yeah, use a satin or a silk pillowcase is really great. But if you don't want to use a satin or silk pillowcase, I personally don't. I have not invested in a, in a satin or silk pillowcase, which is, it's on my list of things that I should be doing. But um, just making sure that you're washing your pillowcases regularly. Um, this is going to create, you know, when you have a satin or, or silk pillowcase, it creates less friction on your hair and then it decreases your frizz, but we can't all have those. So just make sure that you are switching your pillowcase quite frequently because our pillowcases are a breeding ground for bacteria. So you might find that changing your pillowcase can actually clear up your acne as well. I find that that's an awesome beauty hack, but make sure you're washing your pillowcase and if you can invest in a satin or a silk pillowcase. And with that being said, I highly, highly suggest my next hack here, which is sleeping with your hair in a soft scrunchie or a braid. It's not the best for our hair just to sleep with it completely down and not tied away from anything because think about it. You're tossing and turning in the night. Your hair is pulling in all different directions. It's just not the best case scenario. So I like to sleep with my hair in a low bun so I don't get any knots in it. Um, I just use a soft scrunchie so it's not harsh or I'll put two braids on the side of my head. I love doing this when my hair is wet so I can wake up with those nice waves in the morning.
morning. All right, it's time for another break, but don't get anywhere. I'm going to be sharing with you some more hair hacks and then jumping in to the Holy Grail product I find. I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks, some do's and don'ts with it, so don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. GSMC Beauty Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Joe. I'm going to jump right back in to sharing these hair hacks with you. So my next hair hack for you is making sure you're brushing your hair with the right brush for you. Also making sure that your hair is not sopping wet when you brush through it. Your hair is most vulnerable when it's wet. So like I said before, I also like to use a microfiber hair towel to press the water out of my hair um, and let it air dry for a few minutes, then go in it with my hairbrush. I use a wet brush, which I love. It's also really great for my extensions. A wide tooth comb is really great to be brushing your hair out when it's wet. You just want to make sure that you are using something um, that is good for your hair type. So do some research on exactly what hairbrush is perfect for you. I love the wet brushes. Of course, I use it when my hair is dry or wet, but I think it can keeps my hair the safest as well as um, brushing your hair from the bottom up so holding the mid shaft of your hair and brushing your ends first especially if you have knots and then working your way up is a great way to brush your hair without kind of tearing it out or causing more breakage now if you have um if you're feeling like you're unable to grow your hair you might need to uptake your b12 intake so I know that sounds kind of weird, but this vitamin is actually really important for your hair growth and your hair health. So a B12 deficiency can be the reason for dry, thin, brittle hair that constantly is breaking. So the scalp needs vitamin B12, um, otherwise like itching and even dandruff may occur too. So if you struggle from that, it might be B12 that is your problem. Um, So you can try that supplement of B12 to normalize the levels in your body. Um, Just make sure to consult your doctor if you absolutely, if you need to beforehand, if that's something that you're not sure you should be doing, but B12 does help your hair. I love that hack. Um, this next one is, an aw- is such an awesome hack as well, moving your ponytail. So if you regularly put your hair in a ponytail, then you should change the location. Um, make it like a low ponytail or just don't over tighten your hair. So this is, you know, when you make a ponytail really tight, you pull your hair and it can start falling out in front and then you you also risk constantly losing your hair in the same place and damaging the roots so if you like like tight hairstyles it's better to like loosen them and give your hair a rest once in a while and just move your ponytail up and down or else if you put a ponytail in every single day um in the same spot you will find that in that section your hair is a lot more fine i use something called a gummy or an invisibobble they are really gentle on your hair as well as scrunchies so if you want to invest in and one of those, those are way better for your hair than just like the regular ponytail elastics. Um, 
Also, just make sure that your 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 hair is healthy from the inside out. I feel like this goes without saying, but in order for your hair to be healthy, you need to be healthy as well, right? So you need to think about the health from the inside. So you need to make sure that you're eating, um, you know, useful elements and minerals. Um, just add more food to your diet that contains some protein, um, some vitamins A and C was really beneficial. B12 is really beneficial. So just making sure that you're eating properly and staying really hydrated is also going to help the health of your hair. Um, now I'm going to be talking about the one of the holy grail beauty products that I find which is also amazing for your hair which is coconut oil. So coconut oil is often said to literally be the best oil to use on your hair to reduce protein loss and keep it looking healthy. So Coconut oil has been so popular. I feel like it's so mainstream right now all over social media. Everyone says just use coconut oil for everything. And I really do think that coconut oil does amazing things for so much on our body and our head, everything, right? So one study actually examined the effects of applying coconut oil, sunflower oil, or mineral oil to your hair before bed, like after washing it. And they wanted to see which oil would be best for protecting your hair health. So the researchers measured the amount of protein the hair lost after each of these treatments. And they actually found that coconut oil was better at preventing protein loss than both the mineral and sunflower oils when applied either before or or after your hair was being washed. So coconut oil came out on top on all of their studies and actually reduced protein loss in hair that was undamaged, bleached, chemically treated, um, and UV exposed as well. So mineral and sunflower oils did not have the same effect um, on the protection of your hair health. So coconut oil is pretty much made up of like this medium chain fatty acid. It's called lauric and this gives coconut oil this long straight structure and it's a lot easier to absorb deep into your hair shaft as well. So coconut oil is amazing and coconut oil can help grow your hair. So it can help by moisturizing your hair and reducing the breakage the breakage because then it's not so dry. Um, it also protects your hair from protein loss and damage when it's wet. And it protects your hair from environmental damage like wind, sun, and smoke as well, which is really, really beneficial. So to really have the benefits from coconut oil, I think coconut, you need to be making it a regular part of your routine, doing like a, just putting some coconut oil in your ends or as a treatment is really helpful, sitting in the bathtub with some coconut oil in your hair, it's going to feel really great afterwards, it really does help. So when the cortex of your hair absorbs water and it swells up, um, these scales are pushed outward so that they stick up. So this makes wet hair much easier to damage, especially when you're brushing or styling it. So when you apply your coconut oil before you wash it, it can reduce the amount of water absorbed by the hair shaft and then the degree to which the cuticle scales to like stick up. Um, And then this makes it less prone to damage while it's wet. And then coating your hair in oil after you wash it helps make it softer and smoother. Um, And then this also reduces the amount of friction caused by styling. Um, So making your hair less likely to snag and break. And it's also going to definitely decrease that frizz as well. So here are a few ways that you can use coconut oil into your regular routine. So you can use it as conditioner. So just shampoo your hair as normal and then comb coconut oil through your hair from the midsection to the ends. Um, And then as a post-wash detangler, you can, like after you're done shampooing and conditioning your hair, just rub a little coconut oil through your hair to protect it while you brush it. Um, You can also use it as a hair mask. So rub coconut oil through your hair and let it sit for a few hours or even overnight like I mentioned before, before washing it out. Um, You can also use it as a pre-wash hair protector. So rubbing coconut oil through your hair before you wash it um, and then also as a scalp treatment. So before bed, you can massage a small amount of coconut oil into your scalp, leave it on overnight and wash off with shampoo in the morning and it's going to moisturize your scalp as well as your hair. Now, there are, you know, a little bit of some negative effects that could happen with coconut oil. Remember, it all depends on the person. Um, It's definitely considered safe to apply to your skin and your hair, but using too much could cause a buildup of oil in your hair and your scalp. So this could make your hair a little bit more greasy and dull, especially if you have very fine hair. I wouldn't actually recommend too much coconut oil. It's not, it's just going to weigh it down a little too much. So just make sure that you start with only 
only like a small amount of coconut oil if you are going to try it out and just rub that coconut oil throughout your hair from the midsection to the ends not right out of your scalp and people with very fine hair um, you just might want to avoid putting coconut oil on your scalp your scalp altogether it just might be too heavy for you so it is really normal to lose about 50 to 100 hairs a day on your head which is crazy I know and some people have reported some people a very small amount of people have reported losing more hair when they use coconut oil so coconut oil is not always the culprit of this um like I said it's different for everybody this could also like you never really know so just start with small amounts and see what works best for you but I strongly believe that coconut oil is kind of like a universal safe product for everybody that you can use So there you have it. Um, Those were all of the beauty tips, the hair hacks that I have for you today. Um, Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you being here. I love talking about this stuff. Um, I mentioned, I think, on my first episode that I've always worked in hair salons. So hair has always kind of been like just a little bit of a passion to me. I find it super interesting. Um, I definitely know I don't want to be a hairstylist, but... I still love taking care of my hair, talking about hair, um, figuring out what products work work best for people. That's really what I did in my jobs um, as I as I grew up. So if you ever have any questions, I would love to engage with you. Shoot me a message on our social media. So with that being said, do not forget to hit the subscribe button so you are notified when there are new episodes out. Um, go over to our social media accounts. I do update those. Um, we got Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you do have a question, you want to chat with me, I would love to engage with you on there as well as leave a five-star review. I would love to hear your thoughts on today's episode um if you tried any of these hair hacks and how it worked out for you i would love to hear your feedback about that and just a feedback about the entire podcast it would mean the world so thank you so so much for being here um stay happy stay positive and take really good care of your hair (laughs) thank you you've been listening to the golden state media concepts beauty tips podcast part of the gsmc podcast network you can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com download our podcast on itunes stitcher soundcloud google play or anywhere you find podcasts just type in gsmc to find all of our shows from the gsmc podcast network from health and wellness to entertainment and life and happiness to sex and relationships You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Beauty Tips Podcast.